everyone and welcome to how to be represented by an art gallery webinar i am laura yosifescu the founder of the multi award winning laura i art gallery and i will be your host tonight before we start um, i would like to share with you the layout of the webinar and um, also, I would like to introduce you uh, one of our special guests, um, Glenn Badham, who um, is one of our artists uh, that we represent at Laura I Art Gallery. And um, Glenn offered to say a few words about his experience working uh, with our gallery for over a year now. And um, before I introduce Glenn to everyone, I would just like to say that this session uh, would last um, about two hours of presentation style teaching combined with questions right at the end. Um, right, so hi Glenn, would you like to say a few words? Because um, I know uh, you are in a hurry, today is your birthday and um, <laughs> and you are uh, very, very busy. So um, I'm not going to take too much of your time. Thank you for joining this lovely event. We can't hear you. Um, shall uh, we... Okay. Okay. Can you hear me yes. now? Yes, Great. definitely. Super. Thank you very much for inviting me. Laura and welcome everybody. It's great to see so many of you and from so many places. Just been noticing the comments in the chat. Got people from Brussels and Paris, so welcome everybody. Thank you. Uh, Glenn, would you like to uh, say a few words about your experience of working with our, the, with our gallery? Of course. Yes, um, initially I found Laura offering to um help with artists development and training um so i approached laura during lockdown because i would got a an opportunity for an exhibition and i wanted some of her help and expertise with how to try and make it a success under the circumstances and she, she gave me some phenomenal advice and helped make that show a huge success. I managed to get a second one in briefly before the, the second lockdown, um, which again, only a few days, but a great success. Um, and I've been working with Laura about 18 months now. And as part of one of her initiatives, we had an online exhibition, which was uh, hosted on the Artsy uh, web platform, which some of you may be aware of. And it was a phenomenal success. So um, most 10 paintings were in that show and six of them sold, which was all online, no gallery representation, no wall space, just online. With a private view online and um, Laura's support, we managed to get 60% sales on an online show, which is phenomenal, I think. Um, and she's always been there helping with writing invites and um, press releases, all those little things that as artists, we're quite often not the best at. We, Painting, sculpting, that tends to be our forte, but it's its all those things behind the scenes that we tend to shy away from that can often make the difference. Ah, oh, lovely. Uh, thank you so much, Glenn, for your kind words. It's such a pleasure working with you indeed. And thank you once again for your time, because I know today it's your special day. Happy birthday once more. And... Um, <laughs> And all uh, may all your wishes come true. Thank you, thank you, and good luck to everybody, of course. Uh, lovely, lovely. Okay, so let's move on now. Um, so while you will be able, obviously, to see me and hear me as well as uh, other participants, um, you will only be able to ask uh, questions um, by raising your hands or type um, questions in the box right there um, in on the right hand side. I am so um, excited uh, with the amount of people have registered for this uh, webinar. Uh, so if your goal is to 
know how to establish a relationship with a gallery um, that will take you on and uh, champion your work to potential buyers, you are in the right place. Um, taking effective action um, is the foundation of a successful collaboration with an art gallery. I'm happy to be here with, the, with you today to reveal a great insight into the world of art from a gallery owner perspective. And I would also like to share some of the secrets I've learned in my career as an artist, as not long ago, I was in the same position as some of you guys today. I would like to start um, by telling you a little bit about my journey so that um, you can see the many challenges I had to face before being voted by the Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, as one of the most inspirational women in London. Um, okay, I'm just... Uh, I am uh... hey. can you still see my um for some reason the next few pages are not working. Would you be able um Izzy, to go through um would you be able to open your presentation from your side? That working? Okay, yes, yes, lovely, lovely. So, um, great. Yeah, um, if you like to um, stop in the next slide, that would be great. Um, yeah, uh, okay, the next one as well. Yeah, uh, that's where you can um, stop for now. Great, thank you. So I'm here to help you avoid some of the mistakes I've made so that you can reach your dreams too. I'm about to share a bit um, of my life journey with you and um, I'm sure you may wonder why has this got to do with getting a space in a gallery? Well, it has everything to do with it. As you may know um, how to get there, I'm hoping my story will inspire some of you today here who might have all of the knowledge, but something is missing and stops you from getting what you want. After all, you were here. So I am really wishing that if I tell you about my many challenges, you may see that your own um, are not that big. And um, in spite of the problems, you may believe you can do it too. So um, I didn't come um, from a country with privileges. My uh, background was one of um, poverty, fear and violence. Um, I was born in a communist regime and uh, in a country with little freedom at the time. And I remember hiding from shotguns when I was just four years old. Soon after that, the country I originally come from, although uh, fine is independent, uh, socially and culturally remain conservative. Uh, women were not uh, encouraged to have a career. And even when I studied uh, art in my high school, they said um, all I could really become was a teacher. Um, they didn't expect it, um, anything bigger from me uh, because I was a woman. The concept of a woman living from selling her art um, was literally non-existent. So 
I lived in a world where dreams like that were not possible. Now, please imagine um, living in a world where the access to information is restricted, where having big dreams um, is considered a madness and where people are constantly telling you that you are not uh, good enough. I was uh, bullied for 15 years from being uh, for being different, um, but um, I really didn't allow their persecution to define me. I had my first business when I was um, 10 years old, running a local club. Then I started selling flowers. Uh, I did a lot then, and I was in charge of a team of 15 members when I was only 14 years old. I ran a con and, and conducted my own choir and I had concerts to uh, the biggest establishment in the city. Um, and everything stopped. Um, I ran away and um, I ended up uh, in the UK and it wasn't easy. I struggle with homelessness, uh, poverty, and uh, dangerous escapes from human traffickers. I'm telling you this because I want you to know that I have experienced most of tragedies uh, people experience all together. Um, and if you think you have big reasons for not being where you want to be, I'm here to show you that if you look through the right angles, you will see the possibilities that are lying just right in front of you, smiling, waiting for you to hold on them. I guess the advantage um, of starting in life from zero is that you can recognize that everything else um, can become a possibility when you had nothing. When I was um, encouraged to pursue art from a group of elderly friends I work with, I didn't know anything about what it meant to be an artist, uh, what it required to be one. I wasn't familiar with um, this concept. I lived with the perceptions that was told to me uh, once um, when I was very young, that artists only become successful when they die. Um, but in my time at my university, I learned that artists can actually, you know what, make a huge income from their talents. Um, however, the university um, didn't teach you um, how to do what, um, you know, how to get to where you want to be. Uh, sorry, I'm just putting my body down. <laughs> right. Um, right, so... Um, to me, at that time, finding out that you can leave from selling your art was a revelation. So it was enough to steer my curiosity. I didn't know how I've learned it, uh, but I've, I've learned it in a hard way. Um, however, today I'm going to share with you not only how to sell your art um, by yourself, um, but how to find and convince somebody to do it for you. I didn't know what steps to take to get there. I made so many mistakes. I wasted thousands of pounds in participating in exhibitions that really didn't value my practice. I sent um, messages to uh, the wrong audiences. I was uh, spending my own money on fees in art competitions that were not taking me anywhere. And um, I was actually following the wrong galleries. Um, I was pursuing ambitions that were not mine, but um, dreams that were expected for me to achieve, expectations from other people. Um, I've begun to let my heart down and forget about my inner voice um, until I decided to start fresh and evaluate my career, my practice, my dreams, my vision. 
Um, I started uh, to take in consideration um, what was important to me and I have developed plans that help me to be where I am today, living my dream, helping you guys. I have my home studio space that allows me to live in my own world and escape from pain and um, uh, I also obviously as you all know I opened my own art gallery inaugurated by the mayor of London Sadiq Khan and Darren Rodwell the leader of Barking and Dagenham and um, my gallery and my work is community focused minded as I love this idea of creating something from zero the idea of being a solution to a pro uh, project um, I wasn't really directly concerned about selling my art commercially in top high and uh, galleries, although the quality and um, uniqueness uh, of the artwork captured uh, the press attention, uh, Mayfair's gallery's attention uh, with my work display at such gallery and uh, about three years ago before the lockdown um, at the British Museum. Yeah. Um, so as long as you know who you are, you have a, you stand a big big chance to get exactly where you want to be um, so you need to recognize your full potential uh, that you are on the right path uh, especially um, you know because you obviously very clever you were here and um, it would be a shame to waste that um, so um, I know how competitive and hard the art world is but i don't see these as obstacles or as reasons to stop me from achieving my success and i see them as um, possibilities to look at life from different angles um so from um for starting um there is a and I'm sure you all recognize that um, there is a mockery out of art uh, that is happening right now in the art world, um, like anything uh, was and in, in is still art. Um, not many creatives make the effort anymore to learn new skills, to perfect it, to reinvent it, to revolutionize it. Um, and it did shock me a few years back when Four invisible pieces were sold for $30,000 each. Yes, for a $30,000 each. Um, I guess this is an issue why most talented artists are struggling now and become demoralized and hurt uh, because there is no more appreciation of the craft. Um, the skills and sacrifices uh, artists are making every day towards a greater change in the world. Um, I remember how frustrated I was and demoralized. Um, I felt when only to spend a few thousands of pounds to make one of uh, the most, you know, revolutionary work of art and uh, travel uh, through um, and struggle through. Um, you know, rain and, and things like that. Um, I did absolutely everything for my career. And then with no effort, uh, somebody somewhere um, just makes 30K for nothing. Um, and I um, and I totally, um, I, I felt like it was unfair. Uh, but then uh, I found that the news uh, was a hoax and um, yeah, all that stress was for actually nothing. So one telling you the story is because we tend to compare with others, to listen to fake news, information, and we create for ourselves something that we are not. And uh, we create dreams that are not ours. And then we ask why we are not where we need to be and why we are not happy. I want you to think about it. Is this my dream? What is my dream? Is, is, is this my dream? Or because it, it's somebody else's and it looks great, um, you know, from the outside. But is this really what I want to do for the rest of my life? 
Um, so in this webinar, I'm going to help you establish uh, super realistic uh, goals that will take you where you want to be, not where your family uh, tells you where you should be or the society tells you where you should be. Um, a lot of artists' dreams is to be represented by a famous art gallery, but they don't necessarily wish to put the same effort uh, in as a, a gallery would or has uh, when, they, when they build their own reputation. Um, this is not really something that um, you can point fingers at. It's not really bad or it's right. Um, it's right what is right for you, but it's important uh, that you are realistic and that you know what you want and why you want it. Um, so before we continue, um, what I need uh, you to have at this moment is an, a, a kind of like a positive mindset. Uh, I want you to believe that you can have the success you deserve. Um, so if you can please write down right now, um, I'm going to do this because I just don't want to uh, say and share with you things that you will throw away. Is um, I want I want to hear positive stories. I want to hear successful stories um, as a result of this webinar. For me, it's very very important um, that you learn and that you benefit as much as possible. Um, so, um, Izzy, if you could please uh, share uh, for me the next slide for step one. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, leave it there. That's great. Yeah. So, um, now I'm going to share with you uh, 13 steps that you need to take to get uh, you a space in a gallery. Okay, so the first step like I just mentioned earlier, you must know who you are. Please take notes. Please take notes. Just because it's a free event doesn't mean it's not important. You know, the the most the they say that the um, the ones that are free or the cheapest things in life are the most beautiful, like love or um, and things like that. So. Um, just because it's a, a free webinar doesn't mean that the information uh, that I'm providing you um, is not important. It's going to change your life. It has changed our artist's life and uh, it's going to change yours. But it's important that you um, write everything down and that you follow through the promise that you just made a minute ago, that you are going to do this. This is it. Um, if you're not going to do it, um, things won't happen for you. And you can blame the world and the society and the lack of money and the, the lack of health and, and all sorts of things. But at the end of the day, the person that um, has to take responsibility for their own destiny is you. So you must know who you are and what you deserve and you deserve the best. You deserve the best. Um, so if you don't know who you are, you know, how would anyone, uh, how would the gallery be able to sell to their collectors, to their clients? Um, that means that a gallery would have to lie on your behalf to invent things that are not there. And I don't think that's uh, nice in a way. That's not a good work ethic. That's just... Uh, yeah, for a bunch of, for a, a few hundreds of pounds or thousands to to go out there and lie, um, I don't think that's um, genuine um, enough to pursue. Uh, so please be honest with yourself. You all have uh, your own unique um, story to tell. And uh, if you don't know, that's okay. Um, we are here to help you. Maybe not tonight, because uh, that may take a bit of work, 
Um, but do uh, get in touch with us because I will be more than happy, uh, happy to provide you with a sense of clarity about your own practice, about your own style of work, about your own voice. So um, you have to think about, um, again, what is your mission as, a, as an artist? Um, and um, once you know what you want, who you are, then it's, it will help you to identify the galleries that are similar with, uh, with you, the similar mindset, similar vision, similar ambition. You don't want to work with people that are not like you, that don't understand you. So it's best, it all starts with you, yeah? Um, so when you apply for a, a cons, you know, for a gallery a presentation, just make sure your work is ready. Um, make sure that your work um, has got a unique selling point, uh, you know. Um, ask yourself, do I use interesting materials or techniques? How do I stand up? Does my body of work look like it was uh, created by the same artist? Uh, would anyone want to display it, you know, display my work in, in their home? Um, and uh, would anyone pay to see my pieces in person? Um, of course, what is the inspiration behind my work? Um, Gallery is looking for artists. I don't just set out um, doing so, you know, out of goodness of their heart. They are also in business to make money. So being represented by an art gallery means paying out a commission on all sales. Uh, most artists feel that, the, that selling their work is much more difficult than creating. So they're fine with this trade off. That's why you're all here. Um, so make sure you're okay with sharing 50% of the sales of your pieces before you submit in your art um, application. And make sure, especially if you started uh, and if your style is catching up, uh, if uh, it's, it's uh, being picked by collectors, um, galleries won't necessarily want you to go too uh, far from your original style. Is that something that you're okay with? Again, there is no wrong or right. It's right was right for you. Um, but if you are the type of artist uh, that loves experimenting with new mediums, with new concepts, um, love taking a challenge, you need to look for galleries who uh, are not as commercial per se, uh, but they are uh, about um, artist development and progress. Yeah. Right. So, um, Izzy, if you could please uh, share the second uh, step. Thank you. So, um, write the second step is to write down your goal. Uh, it's not enough to think about it. Uh, write down all the galleries, museums you want to be represented by or working with, um, exhibitions and art fairs where you want to display and sell your art. You uh, must take in consideration that the more famous um, gallery is, the harder you must actually work. It just makes sense. Um, and for, the reason for that is quite simple. Um, if you, for example, wish to um, display your art at the Freeze Art Fair, it's um, easier to identify galleries that can afford uh, taking part in these fairs. Um, so if the cost of uh, a fair booth starts from 25k, you will need to be selling one of your pieces for at least 20k uh, before a gallery takes you. Uh, so you got to do a lot of work um, to prove um, your, you know, artwork's worth in that sense. Um, so it's easy to get there if you decide to work with the younger gallery, but um, find out about their future plans and see if their mission as a gallery is similar with yours. Um, maybe this gallery is a young gallery, but wants to stay small. 
Um, once you stay local, once you focus on making a local impact, is that something that you like to do? Do your research. Um, ask yourself questions like, is this all about the money? Is this about change? Um, do you want to have any social responsibility connected to your art? Um, I want you to be honest. You can uh, save both your time and the time of gallery owners and curators by asking yourself a simple question uh, before going forward to your submission. Where can I show my art realistically? So please do familiarize yourself with the past and current exhibitions at galleries you are interested in and take note of what kind of art they tend to represent. Um, yeah, decide if your art is keeping with the themes, with the styles and media typically displayed um, at the gallery before submitting. Um, one more thing, because we are talking about um, sending applications to galleries. This is something that you won't read about um, and it's very, very important. When you are sending a, an email to your favorite gallery, please make sure you know the name of um, who runs the gallery or of the curator if you wish to collaborate with the curator in, in an exhibition or if you wish to be represented obviously you have to go one level up to the gallery director because he's the one or she's the one that's taking all the decisions so uh, make sure that you know who that person is don't just say dear madam I'm writing, to, I'm an artist and I'm writing to you because I like your gallery. Like from the beginning, you don't really like my gallery because you just said, dear madam, um, and you don't know my name. So um, why would I take time to get to know you when you haven't taken time to get to know me? So uh, make sure once you know who those galleries are, um, make sure that you know who runs what. Um, so again, you need to decide where you want to go towards, uh, towards galleries like Tate Museums or local galleries. Uh, while high-end uh, uh, galleries may occasionally take on lesser known artists, it's more likely that you will have to reach a level of recognition or success before approaching uh, large, well-funded galleries, uh, like all businesses. Each gallery, uh, listen here, this is very important. So like all businesses, remember businesses, each art gallery, um, is looking for a certain kind of uh, clientele. Part of their job is to bring in artwork that they believe uh, will resonate with their client base. Um, if the collector expects a, a certain perceived value of the paintings in their gallery, it can be quite confusing to see a lower cost, lesser known pieces introduced. So uh, make sure that um, when you approach a gallery, you know what you approach them for. Um, and uh, there are many, many other ways that I would like to share with you how to do it properly. Okay, so how do art gallery work with newcomers um, they find uh, promising but aren't ready to represent yet? Uh, they may still be able to help you by offering a you know, critique of your portfolio. So make sure you express gratitude for any input you receive uh, on your artwork. Um, since you never know uh, if your relationship with the curator or gallery owner may be valuable in the future. In fact, this is a true story. Um, it happened one of many years back when I was visiting Freeze Art Fair. Uh, one a young person um, was uh, visiting a uh, 
a boot and uh, with his friends and looked at one of uh, the one of artworks in the uh, exhibition and um, she was quite proud uh, very loud um, you know sharing that she was the one that actually pointed out uh, the artist to the gallery manager so uh, and because of that the artist got uh, a space um, and an exhibition a solo exhibition in that specific gallery uh, so you never know the um, art world can feel quite small and words travel fast so always be respectful and kind when dealing with galleries because you never never know and if you are planning to have a long-term career um, i would uh, definitely make sure that i take care of my connections and relationships and i put a lot of effort to um, you know you know it preserve them Okay, so uh, is he going for a uh, step three? Yeah, so um, research, like I said, your target galleries. Take uh, some of the uh, guesswork out of um, how to get a, an art gallery representation by narrowing down your target galleries to places that you think would be a great fit for your work and style learn about the director like i said earlier a curator why not the cleaner you know um it's just there isn't a um necessary order of how you should and who you should approach first but just know everything about that gallery know the people behind it it's absolutely amazing to acknowledge the people who put effort into making that specific uh, business gallery a wonderful place to be to uh, to promote art so show respect by uh, getting to know even the uh, even the volunteer that is um, doing two three hours a week at the gallery um, so show the gallery that you are aware of their guidelines and um, then you have a better chance of being selected um, so like i said when you are writing a letter um, of inquiry just make sure you're addressing the letter to the uh, person not just dear director or dear curator but make sure that you know the person who is in charge yeah it's very 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 important okay um so uh, once you do that um it's always important to think about uh why would the uh, gallery it, especially if you are going to a much more famous gallery please do not write uh, a letter that it can be copy and paste from internet or by anyone else. So when you're writing a letter, please do not look up for examples of letters to send to art galleries. Please do not do that because what gallery owners want to see is something completely unique. But then again, um, before you're writing your letter, make sure you, uh, you meet the person in charge face to face. Um, calls are not as um, always very positive um, it's best um, especially i prefer in my opinion uh, i prefer when artists uh, take time to visit our exhibitions but i will tell you a little bit about that in a minute but i do uh, i don't like when artists um, not the artists that i work with those uh, they know I, they have my time but the artists that i don't know um, that's because, uh, first of all, the call wasn't uh, booked uh, and I'm very, very busy and, um, you know, any other gallery owner would be uh, in the same position. And um, the last thing you want is to uh, make that collector, especially you say your name, make that collector be frustrated because you just call him or her in the middle of things and, 
and yeah without necessarily uh you know don't take it too personal but yeah you've just interrupted something that you haven't um you know inquire about or you haven't uh, um booked uh, that person's time it's very important that you appreciate the gallery or the curator's time as well as you appreciate yours four uh step four please icy thank you um so like i mentioned to you earlier attend event at art galleries um and this is the way you would um, meet, you know, the gallery uh, owner. Obviously, you don't want to take too much of that gallery owner's uh, attention. You just want to introduce yourself and that's it. Because that, if uh, a gallery uh, at their private view, they're looking to sell the artwork of their artist. And in the future, why not yours? So, and you, you would probably like that another artist uh, took your gallery's time, your, you know, and instead of selling your own art. So um, think about that as well. Um, but do make yourself seen at their exhibition, at their event, whether it's a webinar like this or any kind of uh, event. Make sure that you are on their radar. Five. Step five. Thank you. Okay, so again, it's just simple, uh, the same as previous, become a regular fan of your art gallery of choice before uh, figuring out uh, just how to approach art gallery. Attend as many art galleries opening and shows as you can. Um, introduce yourself to gallery owners and curators, I said that many, many times. And again, I'm going to repeat, familiarize yourself with the local success stories as well as uh, the um, up and coming uh, artists, um, because they, they do make a great conversation starter. Be friendly, but remember, you are there as a spectator at somebody else's showcase. So it's very important. Um, that you respect other exhibitors. So you, you, if you do go, um, it's important to compliment the artist and it's important that you talk about the other artist's artworks uh, because, and like I said, the artwork is very, very small and it's very, very competitive. And um, I found quite a lot of artists, they do go to their friends' exhibitions or uh, this gallery and they exchange their cards with uh, the contact of the gallery without um, kind of permission. Yes, you're going there to celebrate the work of that specific artist or uh, of the collective of artists and show respect and show support. Um, but if you're there to kind of sweep uh, somebody else's uh, clientele, um, that can be seen rude and you may uh, decrease your chances to being represented. It's nice uh, to know when to do it, um, and uh, but there must be uh, a very elegant way um, so that a gallery doesn't pick on it um, as well as the artist. Um, okay, so like I said, it's important that you respect uh, your fellow artists and connect with them and uh, be supportive of their work. Uh, some art galleries uh, seeking, um, you know, new artists um, do not post calls uh, for artist uh, submissions and um, they only uh, weigh in is through a referral. This can come out um, out of the blue from a fellow artist that admires your own work, but it's best to be proactive in networking with your colleagues. Again, uh, take time to build relationships so that other artists will want to help you out. It's like about that, yeah? Um, okay, uh, for example, 
we are all about building our community of artists and we have our regular chats uh, meetings and support via whatsapp to ensure that none of our artists are left behind see if other galleries have similar opportunities to engage with them so that's when you can meet their the gallery artist and uh, yeah that's a, a step uh, in into uh, actually being represented. Okay, so take note of the work you are seeing in gallery, um, especially your art gallery choices that you really love to see your work in. Uh, certain galleries and uh, curators may have a specific taste um, um, or favor uh, of flavor or favor of certain style. Uh, in the work they select. So it's okay to ask uh, what they're looking for, but don't worry about changing your artwork to cater to one subjective opinion. So art is an opinion. It doesn't mean that something, if somebody refuses, please, please, please uh, do not change it because one gallery said it's not good enough or it's not fitting with what they are doing. Um, it's uh, always a test um, for you to, um, you know, understand whether this is truly something that you believe in or not. Because if one person's opinion is shaking the way you think about your art, maybe you have to think about your art. Uh, and you're about where you are and about your decisions because then nothing else is going to happen for you if you have doubts about what you're doing so it's important and confident yeah again uh no venue is too small if you're trying to get your art in a gallery uh smaller exhibitions are a great stepping stone and also it's you know it's easier to get into even a tiny coffee shop um, displaying your best pieces is something to add to your CV and uh, an invite event to send to a prospective gallery directors. However, um, what is important to think about is that um, whatever you imagine, whatever you feel you deserve, that's what you're going to attract. So if you uh, will, if you are consistent in displaying your art in coffee shops and in local um, small pubs or whatever, then you are putting yourself, um, you know, a line. Uh, you are limiting your opportunities, or um, people won't be able to see your full potential. And most collectors and galleries, when they look at artists, the first question they will ask, is this a, an artist is, or does he or she makes art that is investable? So can, uh, would this be a type of art or is he passionate enough to uh, make or to encourage, to inspire an investor to uh, become a patron of the artist and you can see that through how you treat your art if you are uh, displaying your art in a dirty pub then what would you want a collector to say about what you think about your own art so treat it uh, like you would want it to be treated by somebody else so uh, it's important that you think about the place where you are displaying your art. Uh, so displaying your art is not yet um, enough. Uh, if you are at the beginning, yes, it's important that you place your art in as many places as possible. But just think about um, to a point. Yeah, we were going to talk about that, um, how important it is to think about uh, measuring time um in a minute okay uh six please thank you easy so another way to uh gain promotion is by organizing your own art exhibition 
so planning an art exhibition by yourself can be a great way to expose more people, uh, including uh, you know curators and gallery owners to your work. Uh, looking to potential event spaces in your area again. Uh, if you are looking to get the attention of high-end galleries, look at a space that's got a bit of reputation. Uh, if you are looking to, um, you know, get the attention of a smaller gallery, then it won't really necessarily matter. But again, um, think about the space and think about who owns the space. Um, and uh, that can be a way, for example, a warehouse may not be a Porsche space, um, but think about who owns the warehouse. Why was it given to you? Was it part of a commission? Was it part of a project? Um, can, it, can it make uh, news worth? Is it news worth? Can people, would people come to visit it? Um, and why is it important? And, and that's uh, something that you need to uh, think about. Seven, please. Okay, so uh, create a solid online presence. Having a, um, an online portfolio is so essential in this um, era. It's especially when it comes to marketing yourself and submitting art to galleries seeking new artists is a um, great platform to showcase your work uh, think of it as a gallery of your own curated by you um, ensure that you have your own personalized uh, website domain um, you know included um, your contact information, bio, artist statement, uh, CV, and if you um, if you had your own show anywhere before, uh, like um, even a school um, exhibition or you know university exhibition, that still counts. And of course, don't forget to include uh, any press mentions. Um, if you are worthy of press, if you are capturing the attention of press, uh, they would love you. So the more press you get, the better it is. It's not even about, um, you know, selling it at that point. It's about building on your brand, on your name. And it's so important that you uh, are going to... Um, promote your art um, in different papers. Okay, um, if you don't know, yes, again, uh, look at other fellow artists and see how they're doing it. Um, if you like somebody else's uh, page, you know, you can make your own one similar to theirs. And, um, but just make sure that you do uh, a bit of research about that as well. Don't just throw images. Um, out eight. Thank you, Z. So again, a, the same similar curate your art when you are figuring out how to submit uh, work to art galleries successfully, you will learn that the art includes in your submission. Um, it's also very important. So um, your portfolio website gives you the opportunity to master the important skills of curation. Um, less is often more and while it can be tempting to throw up um, every little uh, project, um, you will come off as more skilled and professional if you highlight your uh, best work without being too repetitive. Um, by curating your portfolio website, you will get better at curating your selection before you submit art to a gallery as well. Yeah, so that's a practice for you. And um, getting your, no friends necessary or closest uh, family because uh, they don't tend to be as objective as you may need, uh, but you ask fellow artists, uh, artists that 
may not know your practice as much ask them about their first uh, you know opinion on their webs on your website does it look good is it um celebrating my style my work um can you see the images properly and so on and so forth again you know uh collaborate with other artists uh this is one of the things that as a gallery, we aim to do with our artist. Uh, it, we have uh, quite a few motives, but one is one for all and all for one. We believe that as a community, we can succeed. It's not about me, it's not about another artist or the other artist, it's about us. So it's really, really good to uh, get involved with other artists and be part of something important. Uh, so if you feel like you um, don't also have uh, that many pieces to showcase just yet um, for a solo exhibition and to be represented by an art gallery, why not uh, feature a quick and fun collaboration between you and your friends? Um, you know, whether there is a, a video installation or a criminal, or a, um, you know, a group exhibition. Um, yeah, either way um draw in fresh traffic while you expand and perfect your uh, body of work nine thank you nine so step nine is to display your work in a virtual art gallery uh, don't forget um establish online galleries now we have lots of lots of uh galleries where you can um, display your art and sell and uh, i've heard artists who said oh yes i've got my work on this website and that website but you need to think about um you know we are living in a world where um you need to be everywhere the world the, especially technology is uh, improving and you need to be you know in line with what is happening um having an exhibition in a physical space um or in an art fair yes this is quite a old way to display art and to connect with people it may not lose necessarily especially in such a unprecedented times like now uh, will not necessarily lose um, that magic um, about displaying in a, in a physical space. However, uh, there isn't uh, so-called too much uh, online. So you must um, be everywhere you can. The more people uh, hear your name, the better, especially if you're not famous. And I will tell you, for uh, somebody that is very famous or um, healthy, wealthy, and can afford buying, uh, you know, or pay a lot, of, like, you know, big adverts and things like that, and to go to those very, very famous um, galleries who can, who have a large budget for advertising, then it's very quick to get uh, famous from an end of the world to the other. Um, however, if you're starting out and you don't have that yes in your opinion having 10 exhibitions 20 exhibitions might be you know your biggest achievement yes but in compare with what is out there maybe any it could be absolutely nothing so how do you stand out um so it's important that you uh, make yourself known on every single virtual art gallery and be consistent. Don't put a price uh, in one gallery and another price in a different and test the prices and see which one, which fish, uh, fish bites what. No, be professional, be consistent. Use different platforms, but be consistent. Yeah, 10 please. Okay, um, this is very important. Uh, have an effective elevator pitch. I'm sure you all heard about this concept, elevator pitch. So, 
work your elevator pitch if you want to start selling um, art gallery on um, you know start selling art galleries uh, on your work um, you should you should uh, be able to um, talk about your art your inspiration and your themes freely and with pride um, and convey the key selling points in 30 seconds of less so you um you are in a exhibition and you just met uh somebody and a collector who doesn't want or doesn't have the time what are you going to say in those 30 seconds um somebody says once for me that i'm very good at marketing that i say the right thing from the beginning and that's what captures the attention of the collectors uh, think about what can you say uh, that would capture the attention of the person you are speaking with is it uh, could capture the attention of the art gallery of the curator have an elevator pitch for every single person you are speaking with yeah so and don't just have an elevator pitch for a collector per se think about what kind of collector is he what is he interested in? and design that elevator pitch according to that uh, specific um, collector yeah also have your business cards on hand you never know when somebody will ask for one i told you previously don't go to uh, your fellow artist and give your business card to uh, that artist exhibition necessary because it can be seen as rude however if somebody is asking you for your uh, business card you should definitely have a business card in hand um tailor them to your style it's it's an amazing opportunity to put a little piece of your art in somebody's hand. How is this card going to stand out through all other cards uh, that this person has just received to, you know, on that specific night? Uh, think about the content. Make it wise. Uh, stick to the essential, uh, you know, like a striking image, your name, your website, your obviously contact information. So part of mastering how to sell paintings to galleries is being prepared at any time in case you find yourself speaking to somebody who could potentially help you reach your goals so always be ready again be uh, respectful don't bombard people with emails and phone calls i said that before and i repeat myself uh, you want to present yourself at the right time, at the right place. Yes, so, uh, think about be um, clever when approaching a gallery um, and how to do it. Yeah. 11. Thank you. So, Step 11, it's all about mastering your use of social media while you are waiting to hear back from uh, galleries. Why not work on improving your social media content? That way, the galleries accepting artists' mission can find you rather than the other way around. So um, it's very good to be active on all social media. Yeah. Uh, of course, think of Instagram uh, as your agent. Uh, make sure you post frequently, uh, including photos of works in progress, uh, time lapse videos, um, and behind the scenes pics of your studio space. Um, in a few minutes, uh, Isabel, one of our gallery staff, uh, will. Uh, tell you um, all about um, one of our uh, recent initiatives which allows our artists to take over our Instagram and do just that. So, um, and that has been proved to be uh, very, very successful, but she will be um, telling you about that a bit more, how to properly do it. And um, 
it's important that you stay right to the end of this webinar. Okay, um, so let's uh, think about um, the next bit, uh, 12, please. Great, thank you. Okay, so similar to promoting on Instagram, uh, is promoting um, content on YouTube. 12 is all about get me famous uh, by sharing skills. What that means is that every single one of you is very good at something, um, is excellent at one skill or the other. Why don't you use YouTube and uh, make yourself known Art galleries owners, um, scout artists with big following, uh, followings uh, because uh, they know uh, their work could generate a uh, bidding war. You can make money from admissions to the course while also establishing yourself as a thought leader and notable talent in your industry. So just make sure you use that. Um, and if you don't know how to do it, get in touch with us. Um, we will be able to help you with that as well. Number 13 and the last step, but not the least. It's worth mentioning uh, one of the most important things you will have to do after landing a gallery spot is actually selling uh, the arts in a gallery. So the gallery will invest time and resources in promoting your work since they stand to get a 50% portion of the sale price, but you should also be doing your part to get buyers in the door. Um, some ways uh, you can do this uh, may include, um, you know, promote the gallery so uh, the buyers don't have to wonder where they can buy your work. Um, it's very important that you are being transparent uh, once you are um, signing a contract with your gallery. It's very, very important that you're being transparent with your gallery and uh, it's important that you are, you understand um, the work that um, and that gallery does for you and vice versa. Yep, it has to be a mutual respect. Um, and why I'm saying this, um, because um, a lot of the artists uh, may not necessarily, um, and the, what they don't understand, um, you know, when they meet, when they are represented by a gallery, what tells the world is that somebody else officially accredited, somebody who took um, years and years hard work to build a reputation believes in them. So if somebody like that believes already in them, then their credibility has um, literally increased by a hundred. And if you think because I had artists uh, in the past that they said, oh, oh, um, I had this piece, uh, a collector is interested to buy it, but he was interested to uh, buy it before we signed the contract. And, uh, and I'm thinking, why hasn't he or she bought it before we signed the contract? But they bought it because they were more assured uh, they were uh, more confident working with the gallery and having their uh, investment, um, you know, properly done and uh, then with the artist. So you have to think about why would you want to work with the gallery in the first place? If you uh, are thinking that the gallery is taking too much from you, uh, then that's not a good partnership uh, and it's not fair to the gallery because they are putting a lot of effort and um, you should be able to uh, tell them what you feel and if you can't get to a conclusion uh, 
it's best to um, you know go on opposite roads okay um so what i would like to do now um if you can uh, i see yes okay so i've got one more thing to say and uh before once I, uh, after I uh, talk about SMART, and I would like to ask um, two of my special guests to say a few uh, words about their experience working with our gallery, and then let um, Izzy, one of our uh, gallery um, assistants, to talk about what it takes to be represented by our gallery. Uh, I see we got already questions. I will definitely answer to all of your questions right at the end once we finish with the presentation. Yep, lovely, thank you very much. Uh, okay, so what I wanted to say, I'm not gonna go into much detail, but I would like you to, from what you heard so far from all the presentation, I would like you to use SMART analysis to um, reach your goals. So what does it mean? Uh, S is for specific. So again, be specific, know uh, what you want and um, and write it down. Yeah. And when you say specific, don't just say I want to be representable by a gallery. You need to know what gallery, where, how uh, is it local, is it in America? Why is it? Uh, why in America and why in, in the UK and so on and so forth? Be specific. Understand why you want something. Measurable in terms of uh, how how many galleries do you want to be represented by? Is it just one with exclusivity? Two, three, four, five? Be specific again uh, and measure. And also measurable is, means um, how do you once uh, you are specific you know you know where to go to you know the galleries that you want to work with how do you measure your success how do you know um you've reached your success because a represent being represented by a gallery might not mean exactly what uh you thought do you know what a representation means for, uh, you know or a partnership with the gallery means attainable again this means being realistic yeah uh, think about where you want to be where you are today where you want to be and uh, go for it relevant this is something that can be done for example if um, an art gallery depend might not necessarily want to take new artists and they just announced but you haven't read the news uh, they might just want to uh, celebrate and promote the work of artists from the past or artists who've been uh, for um, over a decade or maybe more than 30 years and you're not part of that. So be uh, make sure that you read, uh, you read all the news and that you are uh, present with everything that is going on. And time-based, give yourself a deadline. Don't just say, I wish for one day to be represented. Give yourself uh, deadlines, you know? And uh, again, think about start off with smaller galleries and you can increase up to the bigger galleries or you can have go straight to the bigger galleries, but give yourself, be realistic, relevant, and uh, give yourself a time. Because if you don't have a deadline, you will be just going day by day with nothing uh, going to happen. And, um, and then you will be uh, very, very unhappy. Um, great, so now I would like to introduce you to Kim. Hi, Kim. Uh, Kim is one of our uh, very talented artists that we represent at Lorai Gallery and Kim as well as um, uh, Laliu and Glenn offered to say a few words uh, about um, our 
partnership. Kim? Hi. So as I was saying, I've been with Laura for four months now, and I'm a, I'm a new emerging artist, and um, I've just been getting back into doing my art for the uh, just in the last, uh, I guess, three years. And um, I've been doing all kinds of other stuff before this. So having the opportunity to work with Laura and her gallery has been a real pleasure. And uh, I'm just so grateful for the opportunity that she's given me. Um, and, and much, much respect to her and her trials and tribulations and her, her uh, extreme upward climb to get her dreams coming true and then pass that on to the people that she has brought into her gallery. Much respect. Um, and I, I can't say enough about uh, being able to learn from her. And what she's created from just this short time that I've been with her is that she's created a community. So it's not just a gallery that you're working with. It, it's a family, it's unity, and we all have our own jobs to do. So one thing that I have noticed from some of the people that have been in, involved with her is that some people think that stepping into a gallery setting, they're gonna, the gallery is going to take over and do everything for you. And, and that's not the case. You have to want this bad, want this whole scenario and this, this representation bad enough to do the work yourself, because it is work. We have to write all of our own scripts and press releases. We have to be on top of our CVs and our bios, updating them all the time. We have deadlines to create because we have an exhibition coming up and we have to pr produce all of this ourselves. Um, speaking of producing, I'm doing all of my own videos for um, this one day, one artist on Instagram. The gallery doesn't do that for you because she's really busy working with so many artists to create, um, a, 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 I guess, um, a career and, and her present, her representation is hers is all behind the scenes, but we have to do that work. And if you're not willing to do that, then that gallery representation isn't for you. But if you're willing to do that work, she will have your back 100%, guarantee you. And it is an awesome opportunity. And if you are lucky enough for her to invite you in, I would highly, highly recommend that you jump on it and do the work. And all I can say is thank you so much, Laura and Izzy, who is one of my, um, uh, she's my direct assistant to help me with, with anything that I need when Laura isn't available. I go to Izzy and she is always right on top of things helping me as well. So you have a great team here if you are able to be invited in and have what it takes. And all I can say is thank you from the bottom of my heart for that opportunity. Oh, thank you so much, Kim, for your lovely words. Thank you so, so much. Oh. You're welcome. Well deserved. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, now I would like to introduce you to Leliu. Hi, Leliu. Leliu is one of our uh, other artists that we represent. He is one of our most selling uh, Hello. Artists. Hi, Laura. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is Lelu and I'm also an emerging artist and already contract with uh, Laura for four months and uh, and during this those four months I already saw two paintings and uh, it's really great for me because um, I'm also graduating from this year uh, June and uh, so uh, that's really good to me to develop my uh, business with Laura and she taught me a lot because uh, I'm kind of new for this whole um, area um, from, I don't know how to say, uh, from um, the sell, I think basically uh, about the selling things, the parts and she asked me to um, prepare the uh, the painting, how to ship it, and uh, um, the things for the buyer. Um, what what kinds of what what should I talk to the buyer? Anyway, she's uh, very supportive to me. Yeah, uh, so I'm very glad to uh, work with Laura. 
Thank you so much, uh, Lely, for your kind words again. Thank you. Thank you. Um, right, so now I would like to uh, pass the spotlight to Izzy, who is one of our gallery assistants, and uh, she's uh, behind um, the great work that uh, it's happening at Laura um, Eye Art Gallery in regards to uh, recruiting artists and working with artists. Hi, Izzy. Would you uh, like, please, to tell uh, our guests a little bit about um, our opportunity and how they can uh, become represented by Laura Eye Art Gallery? Yeah, of course. So, hi everyone. Um, I'm just going to share my screen. Uh, there we go. So, uh, hi, my name is Izzy. Um, I work at Laura Eye Art Gallery and we are actually in the midst of recruiting new artists. Um, we have 20 spaces available for current and new recruits. Um, so I'm going to tell you a bit more about how we recruit and what we require, as well as about us and our morals as a gallery. And at the end, if that's something that you would like to be interested in, I will drop a link into our application process. So as, as Laura mentioned, um, Laura I Art Gallery is run by artists for artists that aim to help artists to help themselves. No one is left behind within our community and we really do value artists who make a difference within the world as well as in their own communities and community is definitely a running theme within our gallery as we work within our local community as well as across the whole world. Um, we are recruiting artists of tomorrow who love to take charge of their own destiny, as well as being in control of their own success. As Kim mentioned, we do get our artists to do a lot of the um, admin stuff, such as writing their own press releases. Uh, we do obviously assist with these as we do have artists who don't speak English as their first language. So they are always sent to us and we will help out with any sort of grammar type things with that um like our own gallery director who has challenged the impossible as you just heard and we would like to believe that with us you will exceed your expectations of yourself um so we obviously would like to ensure that we are a good fit for you just as much as you are for us so with this we do interview any prospective artists which gives them the opportunity to ask us any questions and get to know us as well as the other way around. As I mentioned, our local community as well as our global community of art lovers is very, very important to us. And we have artists from all over the world that we represent. Um, I know some people here today are from different countries, so that's great to see. Um, and as mentioned earlier, we do have different WhatsApp group chats. All of our artists is in one massive group chat together. And then like Kim said, we do have gallery assistants who represent a small group of artists and we have separate group chats for them. So I have one with my artists that allow them to bounce ideas off of each other as well as myself. And it always works really well. Um, they often exhibit together as well and there are a lot of opportunities to exhibit solo. Um, we recently had one with one of our artists called Ted Harrison and it went really, really well. He managed to sell loads of pieces. And if you were with us from the beginning, you would have heard Glenn talk about how we had a group exhibition previously and he managed to sell six pieces. Um, we also do the one day one artist initiative which allows the artists to take over our Instagram page. This does allow them to promote any work that they would like. They can show the work in progress, they can do video behind the scenes, maybe an interview talking about a specific piece, anything that they would like to promote at all. It helps them to interact with their audience a lot more and really does bring in a lot of collectors and viewers to their artist profiles, which leads to more possible sales. 
So as mentioned before, we do work with two online websites as due to the pandemic, we have wanted to really expand our reach with online. So we use a um, platform called Artsy as well as Artnet. Um, within the new year, we would like to again start exhibiting in person, but currently these are the platforms that we are using. So Artsy is one of the largest online art marketplaces. Um, they give us pr the privilege of working directly with specialized liaisons as well as best in class technology to build effective digital strategies that meet the needs of our artists, as well as reaching over a million people, which is which gives the artists like incredible exposure. And you can't actually get access to Artsy without gallery representation. So we think this is a, a great selling point to get representation. If not, then you will never get onto a platform like this. The other um, platform that we use is called Artnet. Artnet actually has double the amount of reach than Artsy, um, reaching over 2.1 million monthly users from all over the world and they do offer us specifically um, homepage and events features so with our upcoming exhibitions that we have in October as well as in December they will promote that on their website as well as on their homepages as well as targeted email market alerts and um, news coverage social media features and it's, again you can't get onto Artnet without gallery representation. So a bit more about our um, options that we have. We do have multiple options for representation. Um, option one is um, allows you to sell your art on Artsy as well as on our own website and all of the social media that I was talking about will be in effect so you will take part in the one day one artist as well as any group exhibitions that we have coming up um, the takeovers of our facebook instagram promotions across all social media pages um, and with this option there is oh is it okay there is a, a representation that of um, £60 per month, and we do take 35% commission on sales. Um, with this, it includes uh, exclusivity on artworks that we pick that we would like to represent. Um, with this, even if you sell them separately from our websites or on RC or on Artnet, we will stay, still take this commission. However, we do have non-exclusivity donations of 150 per month or 300 per month without any commission. Um, these donations are fixed and unfortunately non-negotiable as we do need our artists to support us just as much as we support them. And um, as we are a non-for-profit organization, all of the money goes back into the gallery, back into the community, ensuring that we can provide the best for our artists as well as the surrounding community. So the next option, option B, allows you to sell your art on our website, Artsy and Artnet. So this will give you a reach of over 3 million people will be seeing and viewing your art for sale and as well as the social media channels that we own and you'd be doing the one day or one artist thing as well as well as any other promotion that you would like to require with this option um the representation donation fee is 100 pound per month but we do take a smaller commission on the sales at 30% and then the non-exclusivity donations are 220 per month and five, uh, 450 per month. Um, with the commissions that we take um, and the donation, we once you have sold an, a painting with us, we will actually not take the donation for the following month. Um, as we feel this works really well with a lot of our artists. 
Um, so with this, we do have an interview process. Um, if this is like something that you were interested in, then I thought I'd give you a bit of background about how we interview and maybe you can prepare something. Um, so with the interview, we unfortunately cannot guarantee representation, even if you are interviewed. Um, this is just because we, as I said, we would like to ensure that you are a good fit for us as well as us for you. So even if you are considered the best in your genre, if we don't feel like you are the good fit for us, then we will direct you elsewhere as we do not want to waste any of your time. Um, within the interview, we do ask the artists to have a physical piece with them, no more than three or four, one is fine. Um, this is just so we can see the quality and ensure that your standards meet our standards as well as we have loads of collectors that buy from us and we want to ensure them good quality works so then they can keep coming back. Um, I would recommend having any questions that you would like to ask prepared. Um, with this, we only take up to 10 pieces um, and obviously we require exclusivity if that is one of the options that you have chosen. Um, but we do ask our, at the end of the interview that you send us 20 images and then we will pick 10, maximum 10. Um, if you have less, there's no worries. You can still send us less. But then obviously the donation is still at a fixed price. So, yeah, um, I just wanted to reiterate that we seek the right fit for our relationships and if if at the end of the interview you feel like you're a good fit for us and we feel like you're a good fit for you, then we will definitely make any necessary arrangements to move forward with the representation process. Yeah, so just to um, reiterate, we do have only 20 spaces for representation at the moment and we do work on a first come first serve basis. So if this is um, something that you would like to be interested in, I will pop the link into the chat now, and then you can make sure you get your applications in as quickly as possible, and we can move forward with your representation, and you can get into our um, exhibitions at the end of October, which is really exciting. Oh, thank you. If anyone has any questions, do let us know.